Globally, the food industry is experiencing all sorts of rapid change, and the explosion in the world population is creating a demand curve that looks very scary for the industry. And both of you are solving this food challenge that we face globally with technology and doing very different solutions to it, tackling different aspects of it. Katharina, with Live In Farms, you're creating new sustainable proteins that are healthy, much more digestible, lower cost and sustainable. And Sanford, with your platform at Pharmacy, you're creating and building farms to service industries, again, in a close urban context. I wanna start with you, Katharina. So you've got a insect-based protein that's clean and healthy, but in a large part of the world, there are challenges with cultural aversion to eating insects. So how do you see it, the, uh, the product penetrating those markets? We really see it as, a, uh, as an ingredient. Um, so if you think of uh, a pea protein or a hemp protein, plant-based proteins, um, or, uh, or, or even uh, a whey protein that comes from milk, uh, it's really a, a, an ingredient that goes into different kinds of foods. Right. Uh, and in that way, we see that the cultural aversion uh, might be much less. It just increases the functionality of the food. It, uh, it decreases the glycemic index in your food, so it lowers the risk of diabetes because it contains a lot of fiber, so that digests carbohydrates. Which is unusual for meat protein. Exactly, there's actually no fiber in other kinds of meats. It's only in insects that we have fiber. Um, so if you mix it, for example, into a bread mixture um, or with rice, um, it will lower the index um, that, in, that, that um, causes right. diabetes. And technology, Sanford, you're bringing into the equation as well. How does your technology platform work to bring more sustainable solutions to the market? Well, we try to leverage the um, in IoT technology, Internet of Things, with more controlling and monitoring real time on the farms while we, are, we can be away from it. We take the advantage of um, vertically stacking it up so as I think vertical farming is no new science nowadays. It's been very popular in the Western country. But in an um, urban city like Hong Kong, stacking it up, vertical farming is definitely essential to save up, save up some space. And both of you bring technology to the equation, such as IoT and monitoring. But then there's a lot of analytics opportunities around the production of the, the different products you're making, herbs and, and insect protein. Where do you see analytics applying? In the insect space, um, we're actually in the very beginning of it. Um, so traditionally, insects have not been cultured. We just are starting this new type of, of, of agriculture right now. So there's a huge data set that we need to gather and, and analyze, such as, of course, temperature and humidity in the, in the growing process. But apart from that, also gases um, that are prevalent. One of the big benefits to your platform is the environmental uh, benefits of the, the feedback loop you have with waste product and waste streams actually being used as the inputs. How does that work? So actually, food waste in the world um, is a tremendous problem. So it accounts to 8% of global warming. And also, uh, agricultural practices are the single biggest factor for global warming, the biggest polluter of the world's oceans. Um, so we're facing a huge challenge there. And insects can do um, one thing very well, that's their the key position of them in the ecosystem is that they can take waste materials and make high quality protein and fertilize out of it. So that's exactly what we do. We utilize uh, waste streams such as bakery waste, uh, old bread, um, or brewery waste, spent grains, uh, in order to feed the insects and drastically lower the environmental footprint and also the economical footprint of it. Right. Sanford, what will you expand beyond herbs? Because the model obviously makes a lot of sense bringing food sustainably closer to people, but herbs is the product today. Where do you expand from here? I hope that when, once we are able to build more trust with the customers, we would like to build more salad greens or leafy greens, promote a real genuine, genuine vegetable food source for the cities. You think that cost isn't really the central theme here, it's about quality and sustainability? It's more really the customers, what they really value is on. Um, for example, if it really values on the high qualities, the premium qualities, mm. I think we can outwitten the, uh, the importers, really. Um, because when, when we sell our products to the customers, they really, um, what we can really offer is genuine, 100% satisfactory products. Where importers, they, sometimes they take weeks to have the product arrive and the scrap values, I mean the scrap rate is so high right. that you can't use 100% of all the products.